Hi, everybody. I'm psychotherapist Dani Solares, and this is Monica Rodriguez. And I wanted to interview Monica because she has an amazing testimony of trial, struggle, discouragement, and ending with a powerful manifestation. So, Monica, you have been through a fertility journey for the last how long? It's been two years. Two years. And I know from from having talked to you that it was a pretty, it was like a, a, a roller coaster of an experience. A lot of ups and downs. Tell us a little bit about your story with fertility. Um, well, I start when I was younger, I was like, I don't know if I want kids. And then as I got older and wiser, um, I realized that I did want kids. My husband and I, we wanted a family. Um, so we started trying and, um, you know, we thought, oh, this is going to be easy. It'll be like one, two, three, and we'll get pregnant. And it did not happen. Um, when the first year passed, that was okay. I was like, all right, I think there's some issues going on. Um, but I was a little bit reluctant to go to any fertility doctor just because I believe in everything, you know, natural and holistic. Um, but once we got into about a year and a half, a little bit more than a year and a half, I was like, okay, um, I think it's time that we see a fertility doctor. And then we figured out that it was more of a male issue. Um, and it was just a roller coaster of emotions. Just there was, I know there was times that I kind of doubted if I was even going to be a mom. Um, and you know, every month when you got your cycle, it was, it was terrible. It, you always had hope every month. And then once you got your cycle, you were, it was down in the dumps again. Yeah. And I know from having talked to a lot of people and known a lot of people struggling with fertility and infertility issues that they're very painful, you know, and there's so much emotionally that goes on within the woman about what's wrong with me and why, you know, why can't I do this thing that is such a biological, natural, innate thing to do. And you know, there could be shame, there could be self-blame, There, there's definitely a lot of discouragement, there's definitely a lot of frustration in the process. And it's funny because you were at uh, some of my Law of Attraction uh, workshops and you pulled the card, the affirmation card twice that said, I am expecting. Mm -hmm. I did. I did. And that was, I got goosebumps when I got the second one, I immediately texted my husband and I'm like, look at what I got. Um, so yes, the universe was definitely telling me it was going to happen. Um, I just needed to sit back and kind of loosen my control and just know that it was going to happen at the right time. And now looking back all the times that I wanted it to happen, I'm like, okay, I understand why it didn't happen then now and why it happened now. So it, it all makes sense. <laughs> One of the things people really struggle to understand is that everything that we go through, we really go through for a reason. We don't fully understand it. We may never fully understand, even in this life, why we went through certain things. Um, Tell me a little bit about A, how you work through the discouragement every month and how you work to stay in faith and optimism because I know you're big on the law of attraction so you know I I know that you were worried about keeping your mind in the right place but then there were the emotions and the feelings so I want to know a little bit about how you work through that it was not easy um it definitely had its roller coasters and I'm not going to say that it was constantly like positivity all the time um but part of the of it is I have you to thank for being that reminder of it's it's gonna happen when it's meant to be um also I started journaling um and writing down like if it had already happened um that's one of the things and then um something that you told me which 
I hadn't thought of. And I, instead of focusing so much on, I want to get pregnant, I want to get pregnant, um, kind of get my mind off that and start focusing on what kind of mom I wanted to be, how I wanted to raise my child. Um, so that definitely helped. And um, just, you know, kind of just letting it all go and just giving it to, you know, the universe and having faith and saying my affirmations every morning when I was having breakfast, um, those things really did help. And and also just having the support of people around me, um, just, I had both, I had support that was negative and I had positive support. So the positive support was really um, helpful in the journey for sure. And I would also say almost most importantly, I would say most importantly, keeping our mind positive, regardless of what's going on and continuing to believe that it's, it's happening on its time, like not giving up on that faith, I think is the most important thing. But second to that is you never gave up. You kept trying different things and ultimately you didn't have to go the full invasive route, thank God. But you, you, you weren't afraid to try different things, even to go outside your comfort zone to try different things. And, um, and that you were very tenacious about it. And I think that why I wanted to interview you is because we have waiting, what I call waiting trials sometimes and waiting trials freaking suck, but waiting trials are very important. In the Bible stories, you see a lot of people, individuals in the Bible who had waiting trials, who had to wait a very long time for the promise that was given to them. And I love to see those stories because you see the struggle and the falling and the and the trying to take control in their own way and then finally coming back to faith. And that was what I hear you saying was your journey as well. And people tend to get frustrated and give up faith, give up believing, and then give up co completely entirely. They spend so much time giving up that it delays things all the more. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like you, I mean, I'm the queen of waiting trials and I have never given up on anything that I've believed in. And I, I, my, my affirmation and principle is I'll believe if I have to die believing. If I have to die believing, I'm going to continue to believe for what I desire and what I feel in my heart is for me. So I just, you know, what what would you say to people struggling with fertility issues? Because there are a lot these days. Yes, there is. It's crazy how much you, it's more to like gotten more in the light of how many people do struggle with fertility. Um, and I know that it's something, I mean, obviously I know that it's something that's not easy. And I think that sometimes we like to brush it off and say, oh, well, you know, someone else is having a much harder time. They're having, you know, they might have cancer and um, our feelings are valid. And, yeah. you know, whatever it is that you're feeling are completely valid. Um, but don't give up. I always and I, I think I told you once I was like, I realized that everyone that has fertility issues, like at one point it does happen. Like, I, I don't think that God is just going to forget about us. Um, so have faith, um, don't give up. And as much as I hated when people would tell me not to stress, um, it is so true. There was the, we did IUI and the first IUI that we did was horrendous. Like when I did it, it it was painful and the, the nurses, like it was just an awful, awful experience. Then a little bit after I had, um, I'm sorry, no, I had had my eye surgery from before. Um, then I was not sleeping, all this happened. So obviously my body was just not ready for it. Um, and then the second time that I did it, it was just something, such a different experience the the nurse was so much calmer and she's just like breathe think happy thoughts and um i remember after they did the procedure they make you uh lay down for about 15 minutes and i was able to meditate and i was just so calm and i was like i i have a feeling this is going to be it this is this is it and and it was um so just having that positivity even though it seems like it's never going to happen but it will, it will. And you're not alone in this process. Um, and I know it's tough, but it will happen. 
Absolutely. And how did you feel when you got that positive test? Oh my gosh. I was, it was like 10 o'clock at night and I went screaming down. My husband was at work. I went screaming downstairs, told my mom, I think I'm pregnant. (laughs) She's like, okay, take a, um, because I had actually done blood work and it was the HCG that I had seen that was like 180. Um, and that is only that high if you're pregnant. So, um, we just wanted to make sure. So I did a, um, a, a pregnancy test and the second line came out super quick and I was like, it's for real. <laughs> um, so it was at first I couldn't believe it. And then after it was just, I was overjoyed. It was, and then, you know, the morning sickness started and that yeah. wasn't fun. <laughs> overjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of the all day sickness. Yes. Yes. Basically. <laughs> yeah, texted me and I was so happy for you. And I really felt like that was a victory for all of us who are waiting for something to manifest and in the process. And it's a long process and it's a hard process. And there are lots of ups and downs. And I really felt it was a victory for all of us who are waiting for something. And that's why I really wanted to have this. And my message to any of you out there that are waiting for something to manifest, take the lesson from Monica's journey. Trust the process. Never give up. Even if you die believing, keep standing in faith. Do not give up on your faith. Keep saying, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know that it will happen. Don't give up. Be willing to step out of your comfort zone and outside the box because things don't happen often how we imagine they should happen and how we've written in our head and in our mind that that's how it has to happen. Like I always tell people, rip up the script because life has a completely different script and you're the one that needs to conform to it. So don't give up and be encouraged that your moment of manifestation is around the corner and it will come. So thank you so much, Monica. Um, what, is, what is one of the biggest things you've learned through this process? Um, to let go of all expectations. It First in the journey getting here and now being pregnant, I had an expectation of how I thought it was going to be. And it's not like that. So I've learned let go of expectations and just let, you know, let things flow and and let they'll just be what they need to be. (laughs) I was telling you, girl, stop trying to control everything. I know. (laughs) You're not alone. Don't worry. It tells me that all the time too. (laughs) Well, I'm so happy for you guys. Congratulations on your upcoming baby. What are you, where are you at on your? I am 12 weeks. 12 weeks. First job. Yeah. Almost to the second, which they say is the honeymoon stage. So I'm very excited. Well, I think it's probably honeymoon ish. Right. Yeah. (laughs) You're supposed to like your hormones level out and you're supposed to feel great. So all right. Well, I can't wait to hear all about it. Thank you so much, Monica, for sharing your story with us. And I'm sure it has encouraged many people. And thank you all for listening. We'll see you soon. Bye.